Kingdom Blade reviews, we have the winless 15th century St. Michael Falchion. Uh, this is actually a reproduction from an old windless uh, design they did a long time ago. And Cold Athena is exclusively bringing this back. It's a super nice blade, single edge, look at some specs on it, up close looks, and also some cut testing. Let's get to it. Overall length on this blade, all the way from the peen pommel to the very pointy tip, we have 33 and a quarter inches all the way overall length. Single edge blade here, very versatile. Obviously, falchions are known to be kind of like big choppers, especially if you've been watching us for a while. The windless one is a lot more agile than the one that Wolflin has. Uh, some of our armor testing videos really featured that as well. So go and check those out from about a year ago. It was a lot of fun uh, testing all those helmets and the chain mail. So this one's a lot more agile in the hand, very responsive on slashing and on thrusting. Uh, blade length is a little bit over 28 and 3 quarter inches, so we have a single edge like I said. Noticing the cross section in the middle of the blade, giving it a really awesome balance here. It does have a back edge that Mark sharpened, so if it looks sharp, that's because it is. Kind of like more of a Bowie style design, but this one is sharp. It comes unsharpened. You can get this sharpening surface done just by clicking the little link in the corner on ColtsWithina.com. Steel quality, 1065 high carbon steel. It's pretty standard for windless blades um, for the way that they put them together, for they forge them. Uh, blade weight, uh, two pounds, eight ounces. So like I said before, very versatile. Really easy to move around with the, in the hand for a single hand blade. It's got enough length to protect your head, and your knees, all the stuff that you want for a falchion. Also got the back of the blade strikes too. Um, the other thing that's really cool about this blade is actually the scabbard. Um, very standard as far as the leather itself. It's just a thin leather scabbard, but it's got this nice burgundy stained red, more like an ox blood. So it gives it a really nice aesthetic look to it. A little tip on the end to protect the tip of the sword, that way that it doesn't slide through the scabbard, won't really thrust through it. And the uh, little gold accents, not real gold unfortunately, I was hoping it was, but it's not. But it uh, just gives it a nice contrast to the rest of the hilts, to the handguard and all that. Why the little tail on there, in case the blade was to hit, gets knocked over and doesn't glance off into your pinky. So good way to really protect the knuckle line there forehand or backhand. This side of the guard, you know what this side's for? This side is though the blade does not cut down your thumb or anything ricochets, and you have crossfire there. So they really, really thought this out well. <laughs> so from here, let's take a look at um, some up close looks on it. A little bit more about the blade as well as a peen pommel. It's kind of like a flatter pommel here, disc shape. Very smooth peen right there. You can tell that they put these together mostly by hand. And then when we're talking about intention of use, well, this is a sword that was in the 15th century. There's a, there's a painting with it, I believe, with St. Michael. He's fighting a dragon in it. It's pretty badass. Uh, look it up if you have not seen that painting. I don't think legally I could link it, so look it up. It's in the description on coldlithian.com. Um, but obviously this one, other than fighting dragons, this would also obviously be a combat blade. Really used with a single hand. You have different manipulations with it. Depends entirely on what you want. Um, something that's got a little bit more heft to it, got a really, really powerful slash, but also a precise thrust. What I like about the handle too, actually, from moving around with it a little bit before the video, is that it's flat. You'll see this little divot in the middle. It's a little bit of a piece of wood that's carved out. That allows the hand to stay in place. So even with the forefinger and the thumb relax, the rest of my gripping fingers stay really really controlled and really secured on there. And then I just close the grip, and I got the full grip. Right in line with the blade edge like it should be. Ready for action. So from here, let's do some close-up looks in the scabbard, out of the scabbard, and then we'll cut some stuff with it. Let's get to it.
All right, so now we're gonna look at the cut test saying for this blade. Let's get to it. Yeah. You good? Yep. See how dry that is? You could say like, oh, it's a sharp blade, it'll go through anything. Not really, if you've seen some of our other videos. Dude, the cross section definitely matters and so does the blade shape as you can see. Still popped it open, quite a bit actually. Oh wow, I went further in. Dude, that's like halfway. Awesome. Great blade shape. It's got a good thrust on it too, but you guys would probably be mad at me if I just did a bunch of thrusting for the tatami because it would just look like this. You'd be like, wow, it's got a good thrust. So the slashing definitely has a great capability here with this blade. A lot of range to it. Has a really powerful cut to it. All right, so there you have it, the windless falchion. Really awesome blade, very powerful cutting blade. As you saw in the cut testing that we just went through. Really great, precise tip on it as well. If you like this blade, go ahead and follow us over at cultathena.com. Subscribe to the channel, like this video. Let me know what you think about this blade in the comments below. Talk to you soon.